please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Classical mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with the motion of objects and the forces that act upon them. This field of study primarily focuses on the physical laws that govern the motion of macroscopic objects. It describes the behavior of everyday objects like vehicles, machines, and even celestial bodies such as planets and stars. The foundation of classical mechanics was laid by scientists like Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton, who developed essential concepts such as inertia, momentum, and the laws of motion. Classical mechanics is often referred to as Newtonian mechanics due to its reliance on Newton's laws. These laws are universal and apply to objects ranging from the smallest particle to the largest astronomical bodies, as long as relativistic effects are negligible. The study of classical mechanics involves understanding the relationship between the forces applied to an object and its resulting motion. It also examines how the energy of a system changes and how this affects the system's behavior. The framework provided by classical mechanics has been instrumental in advancements in engineering, astronomy, and various applied sciences. Despite its historical significance, classical mechanics has limitations when applied to objects moving at extremely high speeds or when dealing with atomic and subatomic scales. For these cases, modern physics concepts such as quantum mechanics and relativity are required. In conclusion, Classical mechanics provides a comprehensive understanding of the motion of objects under the influence of forces and has applications in many fields, making it a cornerstone of physical science. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Classical mechanics is a branch of physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Classical mechanics is the study of the motion of objects and the forces that influence this motion. It is one of the oldest and most fundamental branches of physics. It focuses on explaining how objects move in space and time based on certain physical laws. The primary laws governing classical mechanics were formulated by Isaac Newton and described the behavior of objects in terms of motion, force, and energy. The importance of classical mechanics in physics is significant because it provides a foundation for understanding the physical world. Classical mechanics forms the basis for other branches of physics, such as electromagnetism and thermodynamics. Its principles are applied to solve problems related to the motion of everyday objects from the smallest particles to large machines and celestial bodies. Engineers and scientists use classical mechanics to design structures, vehicles, and machinery. It also helps astronomers predict the movement of planets, stars, and other celestial objects. In daily life, classical mechanics plays a critical role in understanding how things work. For example, when a person drives a car, the concepts of force, motion, and friction are all at play. The principles of classical mechanics help explain how a ball rolls down a hill, why airplanes fly, and even how buildings stand firm against gravity. It also helps in designing tools, machines, and equipment that make life more efficient and comfortable. In summary, classical mechanics is important both in physics and in everyday life. It provides the tools to understand and predict the motion of objects, helping to shape technology and improve daily experiences. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I re please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The development of classical mechanics can be traced back to key figures in the history of science, with Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton playing pivotal roles. During the 17th century, the scientific community began shifting its focus toward understanding the laws of nature through observation and experimentation. This period marked a major turning point in the history of physics. Galileo Galilei, an Italian scientist, 
was one of the first to challenge the long-held ideas of motion that had been dominated by the works of ancient philosophers like Aristotle. Aristotle's view held that heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones, but Galileo disproved this through careful experiments. He demonstrated that objects of different masses fall at the same rate in the absence of air resistance. Galileo's work laid the foundation for the concept of inertia, which refers to the tendency of an object to remain at rest or in motion unless acted upon by an external force. Isaac Newton, an English mathematician and physicist, built upon the ideas introduced by Galileo. In the year 1687, Newton published his groundbreaking work known as the Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, or simply the Principia. In this text, Newton formulated three laws of motion that would become the cornerstone of classical mechanics. These laws describe the relationship between the forces acting on an object and its motion. Newton also introduced the universal law of gravitation, which explains the attractive force between objects based on their masses and the distance between them. Together, the contributions of Galileo and Newton revolutionized our understanding of the physical world. They moved science away from philosophical speculation and toward a systematic approach grounded in observation, experimentation, and mathematics. Their work laid the groundwork for the scientific method, which remains a key aspect of modern science. The ideas they introduced continue to influence the study of mechanics and physics to this day. In conclusion, the historical contributions of Galileo and Newton mark the beginning of modern classical mechanics. Their ideas transform the way we understand motion and forces, providing a framework that would shape the future of physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Classical mechanics is built upon several key concepts that form the foundation for understanding the motion of objects and the forces acting on them. These concepts are essential to explaining a wide range of physical phenomena, from the simplest interactions to more complex systems. The first key concept is force. Force refers to any interaction that causes an object to change its motion. This can mean starting, stopping, or changing direction. Forces can be applied through direct contact, such as pushing or pulling an object, or they can act at a distance, like gravity or magnetism. The second important concept is inertia. Inertia is the property of an object that resists changes to its state of motion. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an external force. This idea was first proposed by Galileo and later formalized by Newton in his first law of motion. Another fundamental concept is mass. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter in an object. It also determines how much force is needed to change the object's motion. A more massive object requires more force to accelerate or decelerate than a less massive one. The concept of momentum is closely related to mass and velocity. Momentum is the product of an object's mass and its velocity. It represents the amount of motion an object has and how difficult it is to stop. In a closed system, momentum is conserved, meaning it remains constant unless acted upon by an external force. Energy is also a central concept in classical mechanics. Energy comes in different forms, but in mechanics, we primarily focus on kinetic energy, which is the energy an object possesses due to its motion and potential energy, which is stored energy based on the object's position or condition. The total energy in a closed system remains constant, according to the law of conservation of energy. Finally, the concept of Newton's laws of motion is crucial. These laws describe the relationship between forces and the motion of objects. The first law states that an object will not change its motion unless a force acts on it. The second law explains that the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. The third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In summary, the key concepts of classical mechanics, force, inertia, mass, momentum, 
energy and Newton's laws provide a framework for understanding how objects move and interact with forces. These ideas form the basis of much of physics and continue to be widely applied in science and engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Newton's laws of motion are three fundamental principles that describe the relationship between the forces acting on an object and its resulting motion. These laws form the cornerstone of classical mechanics and are used to explain how and why objects move the way they do. Each law addresses different aspects of motion and force. The first law of motion is often called the law of inertia. It states that an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion with the same speed and direction unless acted upon by an external force. This means that in the absence of a force, an object's state of motion does not change. For example, a ball rolling on a flat surface will eventually stop due to forces like friction and air resistance. But if those forces were not present, it would keep rolling indefinitely. The second law of motion explains how the acceleration of an object is related to the force acting on it and the object's mass. This law states that the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. In other words, the greater the force applied to an object, the greater its acceleration, but heavier objects require more force to accelerate. This law is key to understanding how different amounts of force impact objects of various masses in different ways. The third law of motion is often summarized as for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that whenever one object applies a force on another, the second object applies an equal and opposite force back on the first object. For example, when you push against a wall, the wall pushes back with equal force. This explains many phenomena, such as the way rockets are propelled forward by expelling gases in the opposite direction. In conclusion, Newton's three laws of motion, describing inertia, force, and action-reaction, are essential to understanding how objects move and interact. These laws apply to a wide range of situations, from the movement of planets to everyday experiences like driving a car or riding a bicycle. They remain fundamental principles in physics and engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia, describes how objects behave when no external force is acting on them. It states that an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will continue moving in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted upon by an external force. This principle explains why objects do not change their state of motion on their own. Inertia is the tendency of objects to resist changes in their motion. An object with more mass has greater inertia, meaning it requires more force to change its motion. For example, a heavy truck is harder to push and stop than a small car because the truck has more mass and greater inertia. Similarly, if a person slides a book across a table, the book will eventually stop because of forces like friction and air resistance. Without these external forces, the book would continue sliding indefinitely. The concept of inertia is important because it helps explain many everyday experiences. When riding in a vehicle, a person may feel pulled backward when the vehicle suddenly starts moving or forward when the vehicle suddenly stops. This happens because the person's body tends to remain in its current state of motion due to inertia while the vehicle is changing its motion. In conclusion, the first law of motion highlights the natural tendency of objects to maintain their current state of motion unless a force intervenes. Inertia is the key concept that explains why this happens. The law of inertia is fundamental to understanding how forces affect the motion of objects and plays a central role in classical mechanics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon.
Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The second law of motion explains the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. This law states that the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration. In simpler terms, it means that the greater the force applied to an object, the faster it will accelerate, but how much it accelerates also depends on its mass. This law shows that force causes objects to accelerate, meaning to change their speed or direction. For example, if you push a light object like a small toy car, it will accelerate quickly because it has little mass. However, if you push a heavier object such as a full shopping cart, the same force will produce less acceleration because the object has more mass. The second law also explains that an object with more mass requires more force to achieve the same acceleration as a lighter object. This principle is important in many practical situations, such as moving heavy machinery or designing vehicles. Engineers must consider the mass of objects and the forces needed to move them efficiently. In addition, this law applies to the deceleration of objects. If you want to slow down a moving car, you need to apply a force in the opposite direction, which is why brakes are necessary. The force applied by the brakes decreases the car's speed, and the amount of braking force needed depends on the car's mass and current speed. In conclusion, the second law of motion explains how force and acceleration are connected. It shows that the amount of force needed to change an object's motion depends on its mass. This law is essential for understanding how different forces influence the movement of objects and is widely used in science, engineering, and everyday activities. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that whenever one object applies a force on another, the second object applies an equal force back on the first object, but in the opposite direction. These forces are always paired and occur simultaneously. This law can be observed in many everyday situations. For example, when a person walks, their feet push against the ground, and the ground pushes back with an equal force. It is this reaction force that propels the person forward. Similarly, when a bird flaps its wings, the wings push down on the air, and the air pushes up on the wings, allowing the bird to rise into the air. Another common example is the way rockets work. A rocket expels gas out of its engines at high speed. The action is the rocket pushing the gas downward and the reaction is the gas pushing the rocket upward. This is how rockets are able to lift off the ground and travel into space. The third law of motion is essential for understanding how forces interact in systems. It shows that forces do not act alone, but always come in pairs. This principle is widely applied in fields such as engineering and mechanics, where understanding the balance of forces is important for designing stable structures and efficient machines. In conclusion, the third law of motion explains the interaction between forces by stating that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This law helps explain many natural and man-made phenomena, from walking and flying to the operation of rockets, and is fundamental to the study of motion and force. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before dis please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Work, energy, and power are fundamental concepts in classical mechanics that describe how forces cause motion and how energy is transferred in systems. Work is defined as the transfer of energy that occurs when a force is applied to an object, causing it to move. Work is calculated by multiplying the force applied to an object by the distance over which the force is applied, and it only occurs if the object moves in the direction of the applied force. If a person pushes a box across the floor, the work done is equal to the force of the push multiplied by the distance the box moves. If the box does not move, 
no work is done, regardless of how hard the person pushes. Energy is the ability to do work. It exists in various forms, including kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion and potential energy, which is stored energy based on an object's position or condition. For example, a moving car has kinetic energy while a raised hammer has potential energy due to its height. The principle of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can only be transformed from one form to another. For instance, when a ball is thrown into the air, its kinetic energy is converted into potential energy until it reaches its highest point and then back into kinetic energy as it falls. Power is the rate at which work is done or energy is transferred. It measures how quickly work is performed and is calculated by dividing the work done by the time it takes to do that work. For example, if two people lift the same heavy object, but one does it faster than the other, the person who lifts it faster is doing more work in a shorter amount of time, thus exerting more power. Power is typically measured in watts, where one watt is equal to one joule of work done per second. In summary, work, energy, and power are interconnected concepts that help describe how forces cause motion and how energy is transferred and transformed in physical systems. Understanding these concepts is essential for analyzing various physical situations, from simple machines to complex engineering systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Work is defined as the transfer of energy that occurs when a force is applied to an object, causing it to move. To calculate work, you multiply the force applied by the distance over which the object moves. The direction of the force and the movement of the object must be in the same direction for work to be done. For example, if a person pushes a box across a floor, the work done is equal to the force of the push multiplied by the distance the box moves. If the box does not move, even if force is applied, no work is done. Energy, on the other hand, is the capacity to do work. It exists in different forms, including kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy, is the energy an object possesses due to its motion. The faster an object moves, the more kinetic energy it has. Potential energy is stored energy based on an object's position or condition. For example, an object at a height has potential energy because of its position in a gravitational field. When the object falls, the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. In summary, work is the process of transferring energy through movement while energy is the ability to perform work. Both concepts are fundamental to understanding how physical systems operate and interact. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Kinetic energy is the energy an object possesses due to its motion. Any moving object, whether it is a car driving down the road, a baseball flying through the air, or a person running, has kinetic energy. The amount of kinetic energy an object has depends on its mass and its velocity. The formula for calculating kinetic energy is one-half of the mass multiplied by the square of the velocity. This means that if either the mass or the velocity of an object increases, its kinetic energy increases as well. For example, if a car accelerates to a higher speed, its kinetic energy increases significantly, allowing it to cover more distance in a shorter time. Potential energy, on the other hand, is the energy stored in an object due to its position or condition. One common form of potential energy is gravitational potential energy, which depends on an object's height above the ground. The higher an object is positioned, the more gravitational potential energy it has. This energy can be converted into kinetic energy when the object is allowed to fall. For example, when a book is placed on a high shelf, it has potential energy because of its position. If it falls, that potential energy converts into kinetic energy as it speeds up towards the ground. In addition to gravitational potential energy, there are other forms of potential energy, 
such as elastic potential energy found in stretched or compressed springs. In summary, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, while potential energy is stored energy based on an object's position or condition. Both forms of energy are essential for understanding how objects move and interact in physical systems. They can transform into one another, demonstrating the conservation of energy within a system. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The conservation of energy is a fundamental principle in physics that states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. The total amount of energy in a closed system remains constant over time. This principle is crucial for understanding how energy behaves in various physical processes. When energy is transformed, it can change from potential energy to kinetic energy and vice versa. For example, when a ball is thrown into the air, it begins with kinetic energy as it moves upward. As it rises, its speed decreases, and its kinetic energy is converted into gravitational potential energy due to its increased height. At the highest point, the ball has maximum potential energy and minimum kinetic energy. As the ball falls back down, the potential energy is converted back into kinetic energy until it reaches the ground. The conservation of energy principle also applies to other systems, such as in mechanical, thermal, and chemical processes. In mechanical systems, like a swinging pendulum, energy continuously shifts between kinetic and potential forms, but the total energy remains constant. In thermal processes, energy can change forms, for example, from chemical energy in fuel to thermal energy when it burns. This principle is not only important in physics, but also has practical implications in engineering, technology, and everyday life. Understanding the conservation of energy helps in designing efficient systems, such as engines and power plants, and is essential in analyzing energy consumption and sustainability. In summary, the conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. This principle helps explain the behavior of energy in various systems and is fundamental to the study of physics and engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Momentum is defined as the quantity of motion an object has. It is the product of an object's mass and its velocity. The formula for calculating momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. This means that two objects with the same mass but different velocities will have different momenta. One important principle related to momentum is the law of conservation of momentum. This law states that in a closed system, the total momentum before a collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. This principle applies to various types of collisions, including elastic and inelastic collisions. In an elastic collision, both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. This type of collision occurs when two objects collide and bounce off each other without any loss of energy. A common example of an elastic collision is when two billiard balls strike each other on a pool table. After the collision, the total momentum and the total kinetic energy of the system remain the same. In an inelastic collision, momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not. In this type of collision, the colliding objects may stick together or deform, resulting in a loss of kinetic energy. A classic example of an inelastic collision is a car crash, where the vehicles crumple upon impact and move together afterward. Although some kinetic energy is converted into sound, heat, and deformation of the vehicles, the total momentum before the crash is equal to the total momentum after the crash. In summary, momentum is a measure of motion that depends on mass and velocity, and the conservation of momentum principle states that the total momentum of a closed system remains constant during collisions. Understanding momentum and the different types of collisions is essential for analyzing physical interactions in various fields, 
including physics, engineering, and automotive safety. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Linear momentum is the quantity of motion that an object possesses in a straight line. It is calculated by multiplying an object's mass by its velocity. The formula for linear momentum is given as momentum equals mass times velocity. Because momentum is a vector quantity, it has both magnitude and direction. This means that the direction of momentum is the same as the direction of the object's velocity. One of the key principles related to linear momentum is the law of conservation of linear momentum, which states that in a closed system, the total linear momentum before an event, such as a collision, is equal to the total linear momentum after the event. This principle is essential for analyzing interactions between objects, especially during collisions. Impulse is closely related to linear momentum and refers to the change in momentum of an object when a force is applied over a period of time. Impulse is defined as the product of the average force applied to an object and the time duration for which the force is applied. The formula for impulse is given as impulse equals force multiplied by time. This relationship shows that applying a greater force for a longer time will result in a larger change in momentum. The relationship between impulse and momentum can be expressed as the impulse-momentum theorem. This theorem states that the impulse experienced by an object is equal to the change in its momentum. In other words, when a force acts on an object for a specific time, it causes the object's momentum to change by an amount equal to the impulse applied. For example, when a baseball bat strikes a ball, the force of the bat on the ball produces an impulse that changes the ball's momentum, sending it flying away from the bat. The longer the bat is in contact with the ball, the greater the impulse and the more significant the change in momentum. In summary, linear momentum is a measure of an object's motion, while impulse refers to the change in momentum caused by a force applied over time. Both concepts are vital for understanding the dynamics of moving objects and are widely used in physics and engineering to analyze motion and collisions. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Elastic collisions and inelastic collisions are two types of interactions that occur between objects when they collide. Understanding the differences between these two types of collisions is important in the study of momentum and energy. In an elastic collision, both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. This means that the total momentum of the system before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision and the total kinetic energy of the system remains unchanged. During an elastic collision, the objects involved bounce off each other without any permanent deformation or generation of heat. A common example of elastic collisions is seen in the game of billiards, where the balls collide and bounce off each other, maintaining their total kinetic energy and momentum throughout the process. In contrast, an inelastic collision is characterized by the conservation of momentum, but not the conservation of kinetic energy. In this type of collision, the objects may stick together or deform upon impact, resulting in a loss of kinetic energy, which is transformed into other forms of energy, such as sound or heat. An example of an inelastic collision is a car crash, where the vehicles crumple upon impact and move together afterward. Although momentum is conserved, the kinetic energy is not. Some energy is lost due to the deformation of the cars and other factors. There is a special case of inelastic collisions called perfectly inelastic collisions, where the colliding objects stick together and move as one mass after the collision. In this case, the maximum amount of kinetic energy is lost, but momentum is still conserved. In summary, elastic collisions conserve both momentum and kinetic energy, while inelastic collisions conserve momentum, but not kinetic energy.
Understanding these two types of collisions is essential for analyzing the behavior of objects during impacts and is widely applicable in various fields, including physics, engineering, and automotive safety. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Rotational dynamics is the branch of physics that studies the motion of objects that rotate about an axis. It focuses on the forces and torques that cause objects to spin, as well as the effects of these forces on the object's rotation. Understanding rotational dynamics is essential for analyzing systems such as wheels, gears, and spinning planets. One of the key concepts in rotational dynamics is torque, which is the measure of the rotational force applied to an object. Torque is calculated by multiplying the force applied to an object by the distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied. The formula for torque is given as torque equals force multiplied by the distance. The direction of torque is also important. It can cause rotation in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Another important concept in rotational dynamics is moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is a measure of an object's resistance to changes in its rotational motion. It depends on both the mass of the object and how that mass is distributed relative to the axis of rotation. Objects with a larger moment of inertia require more torque to change their rotational motion compared to those with a smaller moment of inertia. The formula for moment of inertia varies depending on the shape of the object, but it generally considers the mass and the distance from the axis of rotation. The relationship between torque, moment of inertia, and angular acceleration is described by Newton's second law for rotation. This law states that the net torque acting on an object is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. The formula for this relationship is net torque equals moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. This is similar to the linear version of Newton's second law, where force is equal to mass times acceleration. In summary, rotational dynamics examines the motion of rotating objects, focusing on key concepts such as torque, moment of inertia, and the relationship between torque and angular acceleration. Understanding these concepts is crucial for analyzing and predicting the behavior of rotating systems in various fields, including engineering, mechanics, and astronomy. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Angular motion refers to the rotational movement of an object around a specific axis. Unlike linear motion, which involves movement along a straight path, angular motion involves the rotation of an object in a circular path. Key parameters that describe angular motion include angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Angular displacement is the angle through which an object rotates about an axis. It is measured in radians, degrees, or revolutions. Angular velocity is the rate at which the angular displacement changes over time, indicating how fast an object is rotating. It is typically measured in radians per second. Angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity over time, showing how quickly an object's rotation is speeding up or slowing down. It is measured in radians per second squared. Torque is a crucial concept in angular motion. It is the rotational equivalent of linear force and measures the effectiveness of a force applied at a distance from the axis of rotation. Torque is calculated by multiplying the force applied to an object by the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the line of action of the force. The formula for torque is given as torque equals force multiplied by distance. The direction of torque is also significant, as it determines whether the object will rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. The relationship between torque and angular motion can be understood through Newton's second law for rotation. 
This law states that the net torque acting on an object is equal to the moment of inertia of the object multiplied by its angular acceleration. This relationship can be expressed with the formula. Net torque equals moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. This means that just as a force causes linear acceleration, torque causes angular acceleration. In summary, angular motion involves the rotational movement of an object characterized by angular displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Torque plays a vital role in this motion, determining how effectively a force can cause an object to rotate around an axis. Understanding these concepts is essential for analyzing rotating systems in various applications, including machinery, vehicles, and celestial bodies. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Moment of inertia is a key concept in rotational dynamics that quantifies an object's resistance to changes in its rotational motion. It is the rotational analog of mass in linear motion, playing a similar role in how an object behaves when subjected to torque. The moment of inertia depends not only on the mass of the object, but also on how that mass is distributed relative to the axis of rotation. The formula for calculating the moment of inertia varies depending on the shape of the object and the axis about which it rotates. For simple geometric shapes, standard formulas can be used. For example, the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder rotating about its central axis is given by one half of the mass multiplied by the square of the radius. For a thin rectangular plate rotating about an axis along one edge, the moment of inertia is calculated as one third of the mass multiplied by the square of the height. When calculating the moment of inertia for more complex shapes or composite objects, the principle of superposition can be applied. This involves breaking down the object into simpler shapes, calculating the moment of inertia for each shape, and then summing these values while considering the parallel axis theorem if needed. The moment of inertia plays a significant role in determining how much torque is required to achieve a desired angular acceleration. According to Newton's second law for rotation, the net torque acting on an object is equal to its moment of inertia multiplied by its angular acceleration. Therefore, an object with a larger moment of inertia will require more torque to achieve the same angular acceleration as an object with a smaller moment of inertia. In summary, moment of inertia is a measure of an object's resistance to rotational motion, dependent on its mass and the distribution of that mass relative to the axis of rotation. Understanding moment of inertia is essential for analyzing and predicting the behavior of rotating objects in various applications, including engineering, mechanics, and physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Conservation of angular momentum is a fundamental principle in physics that states that the total angular momentum of a closed system remains constant if no external torques act on it. This principle is crucial for understanding the behavior of rotating objects and systems in motion. Angular momentum is defined as the product of an object's moment of inertia and its angular velocity. The formula for angular momentum is given as angular momentum equals moment of inertia multiplied by angular velocity. Like linear momentum, angular momentum is a vector quantity, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. When analyzing a system of objects, if no external torques are applied, the total angular momentum before any interaction or event must equal the total angular momentum after that event. This means that if one part of the system gains angular momentum, another part must lose an equivalent amount to keep the total constant. This principle applies in various scenarios, including collisions and the rotation of celestial bodies. A common example of conservation of angular momentum occurs when a figure skater pulls in their arms while spinning. As the skater reduces their moment of inertia by bringing their arms closer to their body, 
their angular velocity increases, causing them to spin faster. In this case, the total angular momentum remains constant, even though the skater's moment of inertia and angular velocity change. Conservation of angular momentum is also observed in astronomical phenomena. For instance, as a star forms from a rotating cloud of gas, it contracts under gravity. As the gas cloud contracts, its moment of inertia decreases, leading to an increase in its angular velocity, causing the star to spin rapidly. In summary, conservation of angular momentum states that the total angular momentum of a closed system remains constant in the absence of external torques. This principle is essential for analyzing the behavior of rotating systems and has applications in various fields, including physics, engineering, and astronomy. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Applications of classical mechanics are vast and play a crucial role in understanding and analyzing a wide range of physical systems. This branch of physics provides the foundational principles that govern the motion of objects, enabling engineers and scientists to solve real-world problems. Here are some key applications of classical mechanics. Engineering and design. Classical mechanics is essential in engineering fields such as civil, mechanical, and aerospace engineering. Engineers use the principles of mechanics to design structures like bridges and buildings, ensuring they can withstand forces such as gravity, wind, and seismic activity. In mechanical systems, understanding the motion and forces involved is crucial for designing machinery and vehicles. Automotive industry. The design and operation of automobiles heavily rely on classical mechanics. Engineers analyze the forces acting on vehicles during acceleration, braking, and turning. They also use principles of mechanics to improve fuel efficiency, stability, and safety features in cars and trucks. Aerospace engineering. Classical mechanics plays a significant role in the design and operation of aircraft and spacecraft. Engineers apply concepts such as aerodynamics and propulsion to optimize flight performance. Understanding the forces acting on a flying object is essential for safe and efficient travel through the atmosphere. Robotics. In robotics, classical mechanics is used to model the motion and control of robotic systems. Engineers apply principles of mechanics to design robotic arms, autonomous vehicles, and drones, ensuring they can move accurately and efficiently in their environments. Sports science. The principles of classical mechanics are applied in sports science to analyze athletic performance and improve techniques. Coaches and athletes use mechanics to understand the forces involved in movements, such as running, jumping, and throwing. This analysis helps optimize performance and reduce the risk of injury. Astronomy and astrophysics. Classical mechanics is fundamental in understanding the motion of celestial bodies. It helps explain the orbits of planets, moons, and satellites, as well as the dynamics of galaxies and star systems. Newton's laws of motion and universal gravitation are key to predicting the behavior of objects in space. Medical applications. In medicine, classical mechanics is used in biomechanics to study the motion of the human body. Understanding the forces and movements involved in walking, running, and lifting can help in designing prosthetics, orthotics, and rehabilitation programs. In summary, the applications of classical mechanics are diverse and impact many aspects of daily life and technological advancement. From engineering and transportation to sports and medicine, the principles of classical mechanics are essential for analyzing and optimizing the behavior of physical systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading that. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Practical examples of classical mechanics can be observed in various aspects of daily life, including driving, sports, and machinery. These examples illustrate how the principles of classical mechanics influence our everyday activities and the design of systems we rely on. Driving. When driving a vehicle, 
classical mechanics is at work in multiple ways. For instance, when a car accelerates, the engine exerts a force that propels the vehicle forward, demonstrating Newton's second law of motion, which states that force equals mass times acceleration. During braking, the friction between the tires and the road provides the necessary force to slow down or stop the vehicle. Additionally, understanding concepts such as inertia helps explain why seat belts are essential for safety. When a car suddenly stops, passengers continue to move forward due to inertia, which can lead to injury without proper restraints. Sports Classical mechanics plays a significant role in various sports. For example, in basketball, players must understand the concepts of force, angle, and trajectory when shooting the ball. The optimal angle for shooting a basketball can maximize the chance of scoring by ensuring that the ball follows a suitable parabolic path. In soccer, players apply principles of mechanics when kicking the ball, considering the angle and force to achieve the desired distance and direction. Athletes often study their movements to improve performance and prevent injuries applying mechanics to analyze how forces act on their bodies during activities like running, jumping, and throwing. Machinery. In the world of machinery, classical mechanics is fundamental to the design and operation of various devices. For instance, a simple lever can be used to lift heavy objects with less effort. By applying the principles of torque and moment of inertia, engineers design machines that can perform tasks efficiently, such as cranes and pulleys. In manufacturing, Robotic arms are designed using mechanics to ensure precise movements for assembling products. Understanding the forces and motions involved allows engineers to create machines that work effectively and safely in industrial settings. In summary, practical examples of classical mechanics can be found in driving, sports, and machinery. These examples highlight the significance of mechanics in understanding motion, forces, and energy, demonstrating how these principles influence our daily activities and the technologies we use. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading that. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Introduction to quantum mechanics marks a significant departure from classical physics, providing a framework for understanding the behavior of matter and energy at very small scales, such as atoms and subatomic particles. Developed in the early 20th century, quantum mechanics addresses phenomena that classical mechanics cannot explain, such as the behavior of electrons and atoms and the nature of light. At the heart of quantum mechanics is the concept of wave-particle duality, which posits that particles, such as electrons and photons, exhibit both wave-like and particle-like properties. This duality means that light can behave as both a wave and a particle, depending on how it is observed. For instance, in the famous double-slit experiment, light can create an interference pattern when not observed, indicating wave behavior, but behaves as individual particles when measured. Another fundamental principle of quantum mechanics is the uncertainty principle formulated by Werner Heisenberg. This principle states that certain pairs of physical properties, such as position and momentum, cannot be precisely measured simultaneously. The more accurately one property is known, the less accurately the other can be determined. This inherent uncertainty challenges classical notions of determinism and introduces a probabilistic nature to the behavior of particles. Quantum mechanics also introduces the concept of superposition, where a particle can exist in multiple states or positions simultaneously until it is observed or measured. This principle is exemplified by the thought experiment known as Schrodinger's cat, where a cat in a sealed box is simultaneously considered to be alive and dead until someone opens the box to observe its state. Furthermore, quantum mechanics leads to the concept of entanglement where particles can become interconnected in such a way that the state of one particle instantly influences the state of another, regardless of the distance between them. This phenomenon has profound implications for understanding the nature of reality and has been experimentally verified in various studies. In summary, quantum mechanics provides a comprehensive framework for understanding the behavior of matter and energy at microscopic scales. 
Its key principles, including wave-particle duality, the uncertainty principle, superposition, and entanglement, challenge classical notions of physics and offer insights into the fundamental nature of the universe. Understanding quantum mechanics is essential for advancing technologies such as semiconductors, lasers, and quantum computing, which have significant implications for various fields, including electronics, communication, and material science. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Int Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum mechanics is a fundamental branch of physics that describes the behavior of matter and energy at the smallest scales, such as atoms and subatomic particles. Unlike classical mechanics, which explains the motion of larger objects, quantum mechanics provides a framework for understanding phenomena that cannot be explained by classical theories. At its core, quantum mechanics introduces several key concepts that challenge our traditional understanding of the physical world. One of these concepts is wave-particle duality, which states that particles, such as electrons and photons, can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like properties. This means that, depending on how they are observed, particles can behave like discrete objects or as waves that spread out and interfere with each other. Another important principle of quantum mechanics is the uncertainty principle, formulated by Werner Heisenberg. This principle states that it is impossible to know both the exact position and momentum of a particle at the same time. The more accurately one of these properties is measured, the less accurately the other can be determined. This intrinsic uncertainty suggests that the behavior of particles is fundamentally probabilistic rather than deterministic. Quantum mechanics also introduces the idea of superposition, where a particle can exist in multiple states or locations simultaneously until it is measured. This concept is illustrated by the thought experiment known as Schrodinger's cat, where a cat is considered to be both alive and dead until someone observes its state. This illustrates how measurement plays a critical role in determining the state of a quantum system. Additionally, quantum mechanics features the concept of entanglement, which describes a phenomenon where particles become interconnected in such a way that the state of one particle instantaneously affects the state of another, regardless of the distance separating them. This non-local behavior challenges classical notions of causality and has significant implications for our understanding of reality. In summary, quantum mechanics is the study of the behavior of matter and energy at the quantum level, characterized by principles such as wave-particle duality, uncertainty, superposition, and entanglement. It provides a revolutionary perspective on the nature of the universe, leading to advancements in various fields, including technology, material science, and fundamental physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum mechanics is a fun. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The classical world and the quantum world represent two distinct frameworks for understanding the behavior of matter and energy, each with its own principles and characteristics. Here are the key differences between these two realms. Scale of observation. Classical mechanics describes the behavior of objects at macroscopic scales, such as everyday objects and celestial bodies. It effectively explains motion, forces, and energy in our familiar world. In contrast, quantum mechanics deals with phenomena at the microscopic scale, such as atoms, electrons, and photons, where classical principles no longer apply. Determinism versus probability. Classical mechanics operates on deterministic principles, meaning that if the initial conditions of a system are known, its future behavior can be precisely predicted. For example, knowing the position and velocity of a ball thrown in the air allows one to predict its trajectory. In the quantum world, however, outcomes are inherently probabilistic. 
Quantum mechanics provides probabilities for different outcomes, reflecting an intrinsic uncertainty in the behavior of particles. Wave particle duality. In the classical world, objects are treated as either particles or waves, but not both. For instance, light is often thought of as a wave, while solid objects are considered particles. In quantum mechanics, however, particles exhibit wave particle duality, behaving as both waves and particles depending on the experimental conditions. This duality leads to unique phenomena, such as interference patterns observed in light. Superposition and measurement. Classical mechanics assumes that objects exist in a definite state, even when not observed. For example, a moving car has a specific speed and position, regardless of whether anyone is watching. In quantum mechanics, particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously due to the principle of superposition. A particle remains in a superposition until it is measured, at which point it collapses into a definite state. Uncertainty principle. Classical mechanics allows for precise measurements of an object's properties, such as position and momentum, without inherent limitations. However, in the quantum world, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states that certain pairs of properties cannot be simultaneously measured with arbitrary precision. This means that knowing a particle's position very accurately will lead to greater uncertainty in its momentum, and vice versa. Entanglement. Classical mechanics treats objects as separate entities that interact through forces. In contrast, quantum mechanics introduces the concept of entanglement, where particles can become interconnected in such a way that the state of one particle affects the state of another, regardless of the distance between them. This phenomenon defies classical notions of locality and has profound implications for our understanding of reality. In summary, the classical world and the quantum world differ significantly in their principles and behavior. While classical mechanics provides a deterministic framework for macroscopic phenomena, quantum mechanics introduces probabilistic outcomes and challenges classical intuitions about reality. Understanding these differences is essential for exploring the fundamental nature of the universe. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The brief history of quantum mechanics traces its development from the early 20th century through several key milestones, primarily focusing on the contributions of notable physicists like Max Planck and Erwin Schrödinger. The journey began in 1900 when Max Planck introduced the idea of quantization of energy. While studying black body radiation, Planck proposed that energy is not continuous but is emitted in discrete packets called quanta. This revolutionary idea laid the foundation for quantum theory. Planck's work addressed the ultraviolet catastrophe, where classical physics failed to explain the observed spectrum of radiation emitted by heated objects. In 1905, Albert Einstein expanded on Planck's ideas by introducing the concept of light quanta, later known as photons. In his explanation of the photoelectric effect, Einstein proposed that light behaves as both a wave and a particle, providing further evidence for the wave-particle duality concept. His work earned him the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. The development of quantum mechanics continued with the formulation of wave mechanics. In 1924, Louis de Broglie proposed that particles, like electrons, exhibit wave properties. He suggested that all matter has a wavelength associated with it, leading to the idea of wave-particle duality. Building on de Broglie's work, Erwin Schrödinger developed the Schrödinger equation in 1926, which describes how the quantum state of a physical system changes over time. This equation is fundamental to quantum mechanics allowing for the calculation of a particle's wave function, which provides information about its probability distribution in space and time. In the same year, Schrodinger's wave mechanics gained recognition when it was shown to be equivalent to matrix mechanics, developed by Werner Heisenberg. This equivalence established two complementary approaches to quantum mechanics. In 1927, the Copenhagen interpretation, primarily attributed to Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, emerged. 
This interpretation emphasizes the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics and the role of measurement in determining the state of a quantum system. By the late 1920s and early 1930s, quantum mechanics had matured into a comprehensive theory, with significant contributions from physicists such as Paul Dirac and Wolfgang Pauli, who developed key principles and concepts that further enriched the field. In summary, the history of quantum mechanics from Planck to Schrödinger represents a profound transformation in our understanding of the physical world. It began with Planck's quantization of energy and culminated in the development of wave mechanics, fundamentally altering the landscape of physics and laying the groundwork for modern technology and scientific advancements. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Wave-particle duality is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics that describes the dual nature of matter and light, indicating that they can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like properties. This duality challenges classical intuitions and is essential for understanding the behavior of particles at the quantum level. The concept emerged in the early 20th century, primarily through the work of several key physicists. One of the first significant contributions came from Max Planck in 1900 when he proposed that energy is quantized. This idea laid the groundwork for the understanding that light can behave like a particle. In 1905, Albert Einstein further developed the concept by explaining the photoelectric effect. He proposed that light consists of discrete packets of energy called photons. When light shines on certain materials, it can eject electrons from their surfaces. Einstein showed that this effect could only be explained if light behaves as a stream of particles, thus providing evidence for its particle-like nature. On the other hand, light also exhibits wave-like properties as demonstrated by the phenomenon of interference. In the famous double-slit experiment, light passing through two closely spaced slits creates an interference pattern on a screen, characteristic of waves. When the light intensity is reduced so that photons are sent through the slits one at a time, the interference pattern still forms, indicating that each photon behaves like a wave, passing through both slits simultaneously. The wave-particle duality is not limited to light, it also applies to matter. In 1924, Louis de Broglie proposed that particles, such as electrons, also have wave-like properties. He introduced the idea that every particle has an associated wavelength, which is determined by its momentum. This groundbreaking concept was later confirmed through experiments, such as the electron diffraction experiment, where electrons displayed interference patterns similar to those of light waves. Wave-particle duality is encapsulated in the quantum mechanical model, which uses wave functions to describe the behavior of particles. The wave function represents a probability distribution for a particle's position and momentum, allowing for the calculation of the likelihood of finding a particle in a specific location. In summary, wave-particle duality is a cornerstone of quantum mechanics, revealing that particles like electrons and photons can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like characteristics. This dual nature has profound implications for our understanding of the physical world and has led to numerous advancements in technology, including semiconductors, lasers, and quantum computing. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Light exhibits a dual nature, behaving both as a wave and as a particle. This duality is one of the foundational principles of quantum mechanics and has profound implications for our understanding of the physical world. As a wave, light can be described by its properties such as wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. These characteristics define the behavior of light in various contexts. For instance, when light travels through different media, it can bend, refract, and diffract, much like other waves. 
The phenomenon of interference, which occurs when two light waves overlap, demonstrates the wave nature of light. In the famous double slit experiment, light passing through two closely spaced slits creates an interference pattern on a screen. This pattern indicates that light behaves like a wave with regions of constructive interference where the waves reinforce each other and destructive interference where they cancel each other out. On the other hand, light also possesses particle-like properties, which can be understood through the concept of photons. A photon is a discrete packet of energy that carries electromagnetic radiation. When light interacts with matter, it can transfer energy in quantized amounts, which is evident in phenomena such as the photoelectric effect. In this effect, when light shines on a material, it can eject electrons from its surface. The energy required to release an electron depends on the frequency of the light rather than its intensity, indicating that light acts as a stream of particles. The dual nature of light is encapsulated in the principle of wave-particle duality, which suggests that light cannot be fully described by just one model. Instead, its behavior depends on the context of the observation. For example, in experiments designed to measure the wave-like properties of light, it behaves as a wave, while in scenarios focused on its interaction with matter, it behaves as a particle. In summary, light is a unique phenomenon that exhibits both wave-like and particle-like characteristics. This duality is essential for understanding various optical phenomena and has led to significant advancements in technology, including lasers, fiber optics, and quantum computing. The exploration of light's dual nature continues to inspire research and deepen our understanding of the universe. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Several experiments illustrate the concept of wave-particle duality, with the double-slit experiment being the most famous. This experiment demonstrates how light and particles like electrons can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior, depending on the experimental conditions. In the double-slit experiment, a light source emits photons toward a barrier with two closely spaced slits. When both slits are open and light is allowed to pass through, an interference pattern appears on a screen behind the barrier. This pattern consists of alternating bright and dark bands, indicating that the light behaves as a wave. The waves emerging from each slit interfere with each other, leading to constructive interference in some regions, where the waves amplify each other, and destructive interference in others, where the waves cancel each other out. Interestingly, if the experiment is conducted by sending photons through the slits one at a time, the interference pattern still emerges over time. This result implies that each individual photon behaves as a wave, traveling through both slits simultaneously and interfering with itself. However, when a measurement is made to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern disappears, and the photons behave as particles, producing two distinct bands on the screen, corresponding to the two slits. This observation highlights the role of measurement in determining the behavior of quantum particles. Another experiment demonstrating wave-particle duality involves electron diffraction. When a beam of electrons is directed at a double slit, similar interference patterns are observed, just like with light. When electrons are sent through the slits one at a time, they also produce an interference pattern over time, indicating that electrons exhibit wave-like properties. However, when the path of the electrons is measured, the interference pattern vanishes, and they behave as particles. These experiments reveal the fundamental nature of quantum mechanics, where particles such as photons and electrons can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior. The outcomes depend on the context of observation and measurement, leading to the conclusion that quantum objects do not possess definite properties until they are measured. This duality challenges classical intuitions and underscores the complexity of the quantum world, making wave-particle duality a central concept in understanding the behavior of matter and light at the quantum level. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity 
if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Several experiments. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The uncertainty principle is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics formulated by Werner Heisenberg in 1927. It states that certain pairs of physical properties, such as position and momentum, cannot be simultaneously measured with arbitrary precision. This principle highlights a fundamental limitation in our ability to know both the exact position and the exact momentum of a particle at the same time. Mathematically, the uncertainty principle is often expressed as follows. The product of the uncertainties in position, x, and momentum, p, is greater than or equal to a constant. This relationship can be written as x multiplied by p is greater than or equal to h divided by 4 pi where h is Planck's constant. This means that as the uncertainty in position decreases, the uncertainty in momentum must increase, and vice versa. The implications of the uncertainty principle are profound. In the classical world, it is possible to measure the position and momentum of objects with high precision. However, in the quantum world, particles behave differently. When we attempt to measure a particle's position very accurately, we disturb its momentum significantly. This disturbance occurs because measuring devices interact with particles, leading to changes in their states. The uncertainty principle challenges classical intuitions about determinism. In classical physics, if we know the initial conditions of a system, we can predict its future behavior with certainty. However, in quantum mechanics, the inherent uncertainties mean that we can only predict probabilities for various outcomes. This probabilistic nature is a fundamental aspect of the quantum realm. The uncertainty principle also has philosophical implications, as it suggests a limit to what can be known about the physical world. It implies that there is a fundamental level of indeterminacy in nature, challenging our traditional notions of causality and the predictability of physical systems. In summary, the uncertainty principle is a cornerstone of quantum mechanics that describes the inherent limitations in measuring certain pairs of physical properties. It reflects the probabilistic nature of quantum systems and highlights a significant departure from classical physics, fundamentally altering our understanding of the behavior of particles and the nature of reality itself. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics, introduced by physicist Werner Heisenberg in 1927. It states that there is a fundamental limit to the precision with which certain pairs of physical properties of a particle can be known simultaneously. The most commonly referenced pair of properties is position and momentum. The principle can be expressed mathematically. The product of the uncertainties in position, x, and momentum, p, of a particle is greater than or equal to a constant, specifically, h divided by 4 pi, where h is Planck's constant. This relationship implies that as we try to measure a particle's position more accurately, the uncertainty in its momentum increases, and vice versa. The implications of the uncertainty principle are profound and multifaceted. Limitations of measurement. In the classical world, it is possible to measure position and momentum with high precision. However, in the quantum realm, these measurements are intrinsically limited. This means that we cannot simultaneously know both the exact position and exact momentum of a particle. Probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. The uncertainty principle highlights the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. Instead of having definite values for position and momentum, particles exist in a state of probability until measured. This leads to a shift in how we understand physical systems moving away from deterministic predictions to probabilities of outcomes. Quantum behavior of particles. The principle illustrates that particles behave differently than macroscopic objects. In the quantum world, the act of measurement itself influences the system being measured. 
For instance, trying to observe a particle can change its momentum, leading to increased uncertainty. Philosophical Implications Heisenberg's uncertainty principle raises questions about the nature of reality. It challenges classical notions of determinism and suggests that there are inherent limits to what can be known about a system. This challenges traditional views of causality, as the outcomes of quantum processes can only be predicted in terms of probabilities. Impacts on technology The uncertainty principle has practical implications in technology such as quantum computing, cryptography, and semiconductors. Understanding and leveraging the principles of quantum mechanics, including the uncertainty principle, is essential for advancements in these fields. In summary, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle fundamentally alters our understanding of measurement and observation in the quantum realm. It underscores the limitations of precision in measuring physical properties and emphasizes the probabilistic nature of quantum systems. This principle has profound implications not only for physics but also for our philosophical understanding of the universe. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. In quantum mechanics, the limits of measurement refer to the inherent restrictions on how precisely we can determine certain properties of quantum systems. These limits arise primarily due to the principles established by quantum theory, particularly the uncertainty principle formulated by Werner Heisenberg. One of the key aspects of measurement in quantum mechanics is that the act of measuring a property can disturb the system being observed. For instance, when we attempt to measure the position of a particle, we often need to use a photon or another particle to do so. The interaction between the measuring device and the particle can change the particle's momentum, leading to increased uncertainty in its momentum value. This disturbance means that the more accurately we measure one property, such as position, the less accurately we can know another property, such as momentum. These limits also extend to other pairs of properties known as conjugate variables. For example, energy and time are another pair of properties governed by similar uncertainty relations. The principle suggests that if we measure the energy of a quantum system very precisely, there will be a corresponding uncertainty in the time duration of that measurement. This relationship emphasizes that certain pairs of properties cannot be independently controlled or known at the same time. Moreover, the limits of measurement challenge are classical intuitions. In classical physics, it is assumed that if we know the initial conditions of a system, we can predict its future behavior with certainty. However, in quantum mechanics, the inherent uncertainties mean that we can only predict probabilities for various outcomes. This probabilistic nature leads to the conclusion that the future state of a quantum system cannot be determined exactly, but can only be described in terms of likelihoods. The limits of measurement also have significant implications for technology and scientific research. For instance, in the development of quantum computing and quantum cryptography, understanding the limitations imposed by quantum measurement is essential for designing systems that exploit quantum properties effectively. In summary, the limits of measurement in quantum mechanics highlight the inherent restrictions on accurately determining certain properties of quantum systems. These limits arise from the disturbance caused by measurement itself and the principles of uncertainty. As a result, quantum mechanics challenges classical intuitions about measurement and predictability, leading to a probabilistic understanding of the behavior of particles. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. In quantum mechanics, the limits of measurement refer to the in Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum states are fundamental concepts in quantum mechanics that describe the specific conditions of a quantum system. 
A quantum state contains all the information about a system and determines the probabilities of observing various outcomes when measurements are made. A key feature of quantum states is the principle of superposition. This principle states that a quantum system can exist in multiple states simultaneously until it is measured. For example, consider a quantum particle, such as an electron. Instead of having a definite position or momentum, the electron can be in a superposition of different positions or momenta at the same time. Superposition can be illustrated through the example of a particle in a box. If we confine a particle to a certain region, it can exist in multiple energy states. These states can be represented as a combination of wave functions, which describe the probability of finding the particle in various positions. The overall quantum state of the particle is a linear combination of these individual states, allowing it to exist in a superposition. One of the most famous examples of superposition is the thought experiment known as Schrodinger's cat. In this scenario, a cat is placed in a sealed box with a radioactive atom and a poison that will be released if the atom decays. According to quantum mechanics, until the box is opened and observed, the cat is in a superposition of being both alive and dead. This illustrates the strange nature of quantum systems, where they can exist in multiple states at once. When a measurement is made on a quantum system, the superposition collapses to a single outcome. This means that the act of measurement forces the system to choose one of the possible states, and the probabilities of each outcome are determined by the quantum state before measurement. The collapse of the wave function is a crucial aspect of quantum mechanics and emphasizes the role of observation in determining the state of a system. Superposition is not limited to position or momentum. It can also apply to other properties, such as spin. For example, an electron can exist in a superposition of spin states, such as spin up and spin down. This principle is essential for the functioning of quantum computers, which rely on qubits that can exist in superpositions of states, enabling them to perform complex calculations more efficiently than classical bits. In summary, quantum states describe the conditions of a quantum system, while superposition allows these states to exist simultaneously. This principle is fundamental to understanding the behavior of quantum systems and has significant implications for various fields, including quantum computing and quantum information theory. The concept of superposition challenges classical notions of reality and highlights the unique characteristics of the quantum world. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Qu Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum states are the mathematical representations of the physical properties of a quantum system. They contain all the information needed to describe the system and determine the probabilities of observing various outcomes when measurements are made. Quantum states can represent particles such as electrons or photons and can also describe more complex systems like atoms or molecules. In quantum mechanics, quantum states are typically represented using wave functions. A wave function is a mathematical function that describes the probability of finding a particle in a particular position or state. The square of the wave function's amplitude gives the probability density which tells us where the particle is likely to be found upon measurement. Quantum states can exist in different forms. The simplest form is a pure state, which describes a system with a definite value for a given property, such as position or momentum. Pure states are represented by specific wave functions and can be visualized as points in a complex mathematical space. In contrast, a mixed state describes a system that is in a statistical mixture of different quantum states. Mixed states arise when there is uncertainty about which pure state the system is in. For example, if we have a system that can be in two different states, but we do not know which one it is currently in, we describe it as a mixed state. One of the most important features of quantum states is the principle of superposition. This principle allows quantum systems to exist in multiple states simultaneously until a measurement is made. When we measure a quantum state, it collapses to a single outcome, 
determined by the probabilities inherent in the quantum state prior to measurement. Quantum states are also subject to transformations, which can occur through processes like time, evolution, or interactions with other systems. These transformations can change the probabilities associated with different outcomes and are governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. In summary, quantum states are essential concepts in quantum mechanics that describe the properties of quantum systems. They are represented by wave functions and can exist as pure or mixed states. The principle of superposition plays a crucial role in the behavior of quantum states, allowing systems to exist in multiple states simultaneously until observed. Understanding quantum states is fundamental to studying and applying quantum mechanics in various fields, including physics, chemistry, and quantum computing. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum states